I'm Samantha Ragsdale with Farm Sanctuary, and I'm here today with best-selling author Kathy Freston to talk about her new book, Veganist, and the incredible voice that she has to reach millions of people about the benefits of a plant-based diet and living in a conscious, compassionate way. Hi, Kathy. How are you today? I'm well, thanks, and you? Thanks so much for being here with me today. Pleasure. So happy about it. So I know this is probably one of the one of the more common questions you get, but um, tell me about the term veganist. Um, what is what does a veganist mean to you, and how did you decide to uh, to name the book and, and coin this term yeah. veganist? The suffix ist i s t means one who studies and one who acts upon. So I thought I'm a veganist because I'm in, I'm interested in all things vegan, all the implications of our food choices, whether it's for our health, for the planet, for the animals, and I want to keep growing in my knowledge. One of the points that you emphasize in your book is leaning into veganism. Yeah. How did you decide to take that approach in your writing? When I wanted to stop eating animals and eat a plant-based diet, I looked in the direction of going there and I thought, ah! I don't know what to do. It's so overwhelming. It's just so different than everything I grew up eating, everything I know about shopping and cooking and everything. So I was so overwhelmed and I thought, Kathy, just take a deep breath, point yourself in the direction you want to go, give yourself a little nudge and lean into it. Because I really do think that once the mind opens, it continues to expand. And so it just took that little bit of awareness to redirect myself, and then I just kept leaning. I continue to lean. What do you think are some of the most common misconceptions about what veganism is and some of the myths that, uh, that we need to dispel? Well, we've all heard, where do you get your protein? And I hear that all the time from really smart people. So this is not a rhetorical, silly question at all. And I think you have to take someone seriously when they ask that because Americans get twice as much protein as they actually need or should have. And in fact, it becomes toxic to the body, to the kidneys, obviously to the heart when it's animal-based protein. So we don't need as much protein as we need. Someone my size, a woman, needs about 50 grams of protein, and that's super easy to get. You know, if I'm eating my whole grains and some beans and I'm eating even a potato, which doesn't have a lot of protein at all, has some protein in it. But that's the most common misperception. The other one that I hear a lot is that vegan is really hard. And I will tell you that there's an adjustment. There's a slight adjustment. And I wouldn't want to lie and say, ah, it's a piece of cake, you know, because most of the restaurants have lots of meat and dairy and things like that. But it's, I don't like to think of it as being difficult. I like to think of it as being a sport, you know? I kind of make it my business to find really great restaurants that might carry a tofu item or I like to find um, non-leather things, like for instance, I live in New York and you can find these um, vendors on the street corner that sell bags and they're made from PVC and they're copies of other really nice bags. So I, I kind of like to think of it as a sport. It's not so hard, it's, it's challenging, yeah. yeah. There's a, a startling fact in your book. You tell us that the current generation of children might actually have a shorter lifespan than their parents. What, what accounts for this sort of backwards trend? If you look at kids today, there is an obesity epidemic. And out of obesity, you get type 2 diabetes, you get heart disease, and you get certain types of cancer. So all of those diseases, which are very uh, common and life-threatening, affect our lifespan. So unless we start to feed our kids healthier food and change our habits within the family, the lifespan is going to get shorter. One of the things you also emphasize in your book is a whole foods diet mm -hmm. and being not just vegan, but being a healthy vegan. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are some of the tips you would give to people on, on really eating, eating vegan and eating well? You know, ideally, eating vegan should be a whole foods diet. So real whole grains, maybe some beans and vegetables and fruit. But guess what? Most people aren't going to be happy eating that way every day. I'm not happy eating that way every day. I want some really hearty, fulfilling food. And sometimes that means convenience food. So I'm a little concerned with people saying we have to eat only whole foods, healthy vegan food because 
most people aren't just going to make that leap. I didn't make that leap. My family didn't make that leap. Um, nobody I know made that leap. We want to have delicious food. So there's, um, there's progress, not perfection. We don't have to be perfect. One of the points you make in your book is about sustainability and world hunger. You know, you tell us that 40% of the world's grain is actually fed to animals instead of people, and that if one in 10 people across the globe stopped eating meat, we could then feed a billion people who are currently starving. I think the facts are astounding, and it's one of those things that we have to read it over and over again. We have to hear it talked about. We have to hear it in the media, because it's so shocking. It's so surprising that it just needs to be repeated over and over again. I always say that if we want to get the big things right, like peace in the world and feeding the poor and the hungry, we have to get the little things right. So what we can do is we can choose plant-based food, we can feed that to our family, we can have our friends over and feed them delicious food that they're gonna like and throw in some of these facts and it's pretty compelling. If you, if you sit down to a delicious meal and you know that you're actually gonna be healthier for it and by the way, you're helping to feed the global poor, it's amazing, I mean, it's pretty empowering. There's so many positives you get from eating this way. It's not just about um, avoiding suffering for animals, which for me is the number one thing, but you get all this other extra stuff along with it. You get to be slimmer, you get to be healthier, you get to prevent disease, you even get to reverse disease, you get to feed the global poor, you get to be a great steward of the environment, and of course the best biggest thing is you get to be a kind and compassionate person so i just think that we talk about it we um, present the information in a really friendly approachable way that um, we're not self-righteous or dogmatic but we are just um, we're just living examples of what compassion and health is in all of your writing, one of the things that I've really appreciated is how you talk about conscious living and our spiritual lives and how connected that is to our diet choices. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm curious about is how have your own diet choices affected your life and, and what have you found personally? You know, I was writing on um, spirituality and wellness for a while and um, I thought of myself as a conscious person. I thought of myself as someone who was always interested in growing and evolving and awakening and I began to realize that I had not given much thought to my food and I wasn't conscious about it at all. I wasn't aware really of how my food got to my plate. So I challenged myself to watch the videos and Farm Sanctuary has some amazing pictures and videos. And even when I was so uncomfortable, I thought, if I don't bear witness, if I don't look, how in the world can I be awake and aware? So I moved into a vegan diet. And what's interesting is it's translated in different areas of my life. So I'm not only a conscious eater, I'm not only thinking about where my food comes from, but I think I'm flexing my muscle of compassion. You know, it's, it's, it's something that I get to practice three times a day and because I'm doing that, it sort of shows up in different areas of my life. It teaches me to be kind, it teaches me to be thoughtful, it teaches me how to be my best self, the best human being I can be. Wonderful. So have you spent a lot of time around farm animals or on a farm? Well, I grew up in the suburbs of Atlanta and um, which is probably part of the issue. I wasn't around farm animals at all. I didn't think about it. I never saw it. All I saw was fantastic commercials about happy people who looked healthy and robust, saying, eat this burger, have this you know, milkshake. And um, I didn't know from farm animals, to tell you the truth, which is why I love Farm Sanctuary, because I can see who those animals are. I can look into the eyes of that cow or that chicken and I see that there's that light, there's that life force, there's that lovely little innocence that I would see in my dog. You know, there's no difference. I loved my dog 
but I didn't think twice about the chicken. And now, because of you guys, I can see the personalities. I can see um, how individual and lovely they are. And I wouldn't think of eating them after knowing them. Yeah. Eleven years ago, when I started doing this work, I remember we just used to dream of hearing the word vegan ever, you yeah. know, on TV and right. in the media. How do you think that happened, and what does that say about where we are today? Well, I don't think it's about um, me succeeding. I think it's people like you and Farm Sanctuary and organizations like that that have continued to raise the awareness. You know, now we have the internet, so these videos of behind the scenes at slaughterhouses are readily available. Um, there is news all the time about what's going on. So people in the media know about it, they hear the buzz about it, they know that people are wanting to know what's going on, where does their food come from. So I am lucky enough to be able to talk about it. but. I I wouldn't be able to talk about it were it not for you guys really bringing the issue up and doing the hardcore work of going in and rescuing the farm animals, which nobody saw before. So you've done it in this beautiful way of, you know, balancing the things that are difficult to watch with the loveliness of the animals so that you can, you know, have those happy moments seeing the success story and seeing who these guys are. So um, I think it's just time. I think yeah. it's just time. If you look back 20, 25 years, how do you think the world has changed in terms of awareness and consciousness about, about diet and food? The image of a vegan has changed a lot, and I think that makes a big difference. Maybe 20 years ago, it was a hairy hippie who was eating bean sprouts and granola and you know wearing Birkenstocks. Now it uh, means that you are aware, that you're up on your research, that you are a concerned steward for the environment. So the image is totally different. You've got designers like Stella McCartney, you've got um, products that you can buy that have no animal testing or animal products. You can be chic and, um, you know, part of the world, really connected with everybody and, and everything without being separate. I think vegan used to be radical. It's not radical anymore. But as well, the research for nutrition is so strong in support of a plant-based diet. And that animal protein and that saturated fat from animal protein is just devastating to your health. And that so many really smart scientists have come out against animal agriculture in terms of the environment because as you know, Animal agriculture is one of the top two or three causes of every serious environmental problem from local to global. So all of this stuff comes together and I think there's just an awareness that we want to move away from meat, dairy, eggs, everything from an animal. And we want to just eat the way nature intended us to, which is to pick things off of trees or grab them out of the ground, you know, that's what our hands are for. Our teeth are great for grinding. We don't go up and down like a carnivore. We, uh, we don't have the claws, the talons to hold down prey, tear open flesh. We don't have the acid in our stomach to digest raw meat. We have a very long colon that is good for you know, plant-based food, whereas a carnivore like a cat has a very short intestine, mm -hmm. so the meat goes right through. So all of this science, all of this research, all of the behind the scenes videos, um, plus you've got great celebrities who are gorgeous like Natalie Portman and Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Rossi, and you've got athletes like Mac Danzig and uh, Rich Roll, and you've got even Mike Tyson, you've got brilliant thinkers like Bill Clinton, Biz Stone, Larry Page from Google. You've got it coming from all these different directions, so it's pretty clear that eating vegan is the smart thing to do, and I think that's just spreading. Was there a moment for you, or did you have an epiphany that led you to this? I think that the awareness was knocking at my head for a while, and I didn't listen. I remember seeing uh, John Robbins' book, Diet for New America, and I opened it up, and I closed it up. That was a long time ago. It was probably 25 years ago and um, just wasn't ready. 
And I think what got me this time was I was playing with my dog, my beloved little Chihuahua, and I was just loving her up and I was looking at her and it just occurred to me that any animal, if I knew her or him, I would love as much as I love my dog. You know, it's just because I don't know that cow and I don't know that chicken that I don't have some affection and some sense of protectiveness over her or him. So I remember one day I was looking at my dog and I thought, oh, I can never eat my dog. I could never eat a dog. So what's the difference? Yeah, so I so just true. kept leaning in after that. There are 10 billion farm animals in, in the U.S. alone, raised and slaughtered each year. If you could say something to those animals, what would it be? We're coming. We're coming. Fast as we can, we're coming. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much for all that you do for farm Thank animals and, and raising awareness about sustainability and health and the lives sure. of, of these animals. Thank Pleasure. you. Thank you for what you do.